Hey guys, it's Tuesday, um, October 11th, and today's going to be um, Navy SEALs, 20-minute uh, Busy Dad-ish style session, um, and I'm going to do something similar that I did yesterday, which is um, establish a easier baseline. Um, for yesterday, it was 10 reps a minute, so for my six counts, so I did 12 reps a minute, um, comfortably. I didn't push it until I, I didn't feel like I could do it. I kept at least another minute or two in the bank and then I dropped down to 10. <coughs> Held that for a while. When I felt good I bumped it back up to 12. I did that throughout. So I didn't take any of the easier six or seven rep per minute um, minute rest breaks that I had taken uh, in the past. Now of course that got me higher numbers doing it that way than it did yesterday. Um, but the set felt really solid and more importantly, it felt pretty good on my shoulders. Since today's uh, Navy SEALs, and that's a little harder on the shoulders, um, I'm going to set that baseline down to four reps a minute. So I'm gonna start out with six, hold it for a comfortable period, maybe throw in a five before um, I, I feel that it's necessary to get on a four. And then I'm going to try to hold that four uh, for an extended period and then possibly bump it back up to six for a minute or two and again do that throughout for 20 minutes. Um, I also want to briefly pause after the 20 minutes and continue going. Um, I doubt that I'll get 100 reps this way. Um, so I'd like to push it to get at least 100, possibly 110 reps, um, however long that may take. Uh, after that 20 minutes. It shouldn't be too long. I, I should get close to 90 or more. Um, that's part of being patient. That sometimes you have to go back just a little bit, reestablish a, um, a foundation, and move on from there. Uh, eventually it all leads to bigger numbers, but again, bigger numbers for the sake of bigger numbers isn't my sole approach. Um, I like volume training and I can accumulate a lot of numbers that way versus simply pushing in that 20 minute period of time. Um, both ways are effective, both ways are good. One way reflects what you can do in 20 minutes, the other way reflects in what you can do in an extended period of time. Both are important. Um, I seem to get more benefit from, I don't want to say more benefit. I, I like both styles, and I certainly do want my numbers to go up in that 20 minute period. Um, physically, again, I respond very well to high volume, up to a point. We all have that breaking point. Uh, I thought the past few days I might have been there with my shoulder, but things seem to be feeling better. So let's see if I can continue with that. Eventually, I gotta fix this hole on my mat where my toes keep getting stuck, messing with my reps. I got a, a new thick style yoga mat that I need to put out here. It's weird that I work out every day, every single day. I write every day, I walk every day, I run every day, I do yoga every day, I meditate every day. But inherently, inherently um, I seem to be fairly lazy in some ways as well. So I'm starting out with six reps a minute. Um, I will probably hold it at least three, five minutes. The goal is to bump it down before I feel I have to need to. That's also the hard part because I almost always want to try for just another minute more. So I can't make any promises that I'm not going to do that. We'll see how smart I am. Five seconds. Here we go.
two.
gotta lose the shirt. Sorry, rep. You always gotta go. Ideally, it's going to be two minutes of sixes. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
Four. Close out the last minute of this five minute block with another six. to four. Mm. 
Four. Two minutes. So, just want to keep moving.
two. Right? My county feels way off. <sighs> Count that as five. So I may be off by two. But at least I'm off on the up end. Five more. Six. I believe. Ten reps should get me at least a hundred. Seven. I'm still caught up. Slower things down. Trying to keep my shoulders square. Not favoring one over the other. As happens. As my bum shoulder gets tired. That I lost track of what I was doing. Considered doing another 10, but there's always tomorrow. So 
now it was an interesting experiment. I have to admit, there's a part of me that always feels a little let down. I didn't put in my all and at least attempt, even on a bad day, at least attempt for high numbers. You know, I don't always get them. Every day is not a PR session for sure. But most often, you know, I put in my all for what I have that day, and it's an honest attempt. Um, <clears throat> today, as yesterday though, was being willfully slower, willfully less intense. And I have to admit, I did like it. It wasn't easy, by no means, by any means, um, because I had to keep things in check. Um, I had to hold that four minutes, even after a hard six reps, when I felt like going to an easier. Um, you know, I am a little conditioned going to a two minute press break. So this reestablishes a certain base, um, which in the end will pay off. In the end, it's all gonna be good. Maybe my next attempt here. <coughs> now, of course, maybe, um, when's my next day? Thursday, my next Navy SEAL. Thursday, I may feel like going all out and seeing what I can hold for six minutes. I don't know. We'll call it as it comes. But as of now, I'm thinking, I'll just squeeze in an extra minute. I'll do five reps, five minutes at six reps a minute, and then bring it down to four. Um, and just keep sneaking those sixes in. Um, let them accumulate without being exhausted by the accumulation. All right, I've not done swings for a while. So what I'm thinking is at least as long as I'm enjoying them, I'm gonna be sticking in some cutaway finishers. You got a little extra volume, a little more fun after the burpees um, as the shoulder continues to heal. That way I'm not pushing too hard on the pushing. So, Today's going to be swings. I did uh, snatches Sunday, clean and press on Mondays, swings today. And then I'll either start the cycle over, or maybe I will do um, uh, light get ups, which are great for the shoulders, great for stability, great core exercise, and overall um, work capacity. Right now, we're going to do some swings. My preference here are one-arm swings. Although, obviously, you can go heavier with two-arm swings. Um, these are competition bells. Competition bells were meant for one hand. Be more comfortable that way. Um, the space, generally, is a little narrower in between the bars and the handles. Um, and also, you engage the lats more, you engage the shoulders more, and you work the core just a little bit harder. Um, for maximum power, two arm swings are the way to go. Um, for my intent here, one arm swings are what I need. Sometimes I will put the bell down between hands, um, between sets. I'll do 10, put the bell down, shake my hands out, catch my breath, do 10. Um, that's actually the way Pavel recommends. Um, helps you reset <coughs> in between. Um, really, though, I just don't always think of it. I'm in the groove and the switch comes naturally. You can see 
get the bell in front, I hinge. Kettlebells are all about the hinge. going to be to wear the yellow shirt, the gold shirt, all the way through. Um, five minutes in, and it was just not happening any longer. Anything that I haven't done in a while. Um, that always leaves me regretful. I get um, happy being back in the groove of something that's long familiar. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean <coughs> I need to do a lot of it. Um, the great minimalist workout I used to do, especially during my ultra running days, get-ups and swings, uh, Pavel's um, simple and sinister workout, which is uh, five singles on get-ups uh, each hand, and I think the goal was working up to um, half of your body weight, three-quarters of your body weight, I don't remember. Um, and five sets of 10 and 10, which makes 100 reps, in under 10 minutes, um, one arm swings. I used to have. Back in the competition kettlebell days, um, I would shave the calluses down so they wouldn't rip off during a set of long cycle or snatches, which they still would anyway. But you could prevent them as much as possible, as long as possible. Personally, the so-called, I'm not a fan of the so-called um, American swing, uh, mainly because as my coach, my instructor, and who taught me to be a teacher, um, in kettlebell sport, they had to put something over your head, snatch it, Jerk it or cross it. Don't swing it. All right, guys. That was a good day. No big numbers, probably considerably less than even what I got last session, um, but it was still good. I like how that feels. I like the mixture of pushing hard for a couple of minutes, an extended period, and then just working on that base across the line and then pushing back up again. Um, we'll see how it works. So today, this morning, <clears throat> I'm 
thinking about reality. I'm thinking about ultimate reality. In Christianity, uh, Islam, uh, Judaism, ultimate reality is the, um, the Godhead. Um, God, existence, isness. And Buddhism, one might say, ultimate reality is um, Buddhahood. And then in Vedic literature, yogic thought, um, ultimate reality would be uh, Brahma, that which is past Maya, that the universe itself is an illusion, or Laila, the divine play of God, um, and ultimate reality lies outside of that. Um, so there's big changes in quantum physics with the uh, embrace. They awarded the, no the Nobel Prize to, uh, I think it was three physicists who worked on Bell's theorem. I cannot explain even the most basic things of quantum physics. Um, I love reading about it. I understand about 1% of what I read. But it sinks in not as knowledge, but as inspiration. Um, and reading about the scientists, reading about Bell, Bell's theorem, uh, named after John Bell, um, some say it refutes uh, Einstein's theory of relativity. I don't know if it does, if it doesn't. I don't think anything really refutes anything else. It just builds upon it. Um, and in that sense, we come to uh, ultimate reality that we are, we know ultimate reality because that's what we are. We experience it on every single level. We go from uh, nothingness to energetic patterns, vibrations from uh, that thin little string somewhere in existence um, that produces the vibrations of um, protons, electrons, neutrons that form into atoms, that form into cells, that form into our molecules and then cells, and then human form. But we are everywhere along that line. That's existence, that's ultimate reality. So we know ultimate reality because that's what we are. We're the experience of ultimate reality. We are the expression of ultimate reality. Um, I try when I talk to tie everything back to burpees. Um, the main reason anyone uh, is probably going to tune in to watch a video is because of burpees. Uh, that's why I've tuned in to everyone else's video. However, I get so much more than just burpees. Um, watching each and every one of you, regardless of any discussion, um, it's just a everyone's different styles of burpee, everyone's different style of working out, everyone's different expression of how they work out, um, what they talk about during and after and before their workouts. Um, that is ultimate reality being expressed as individuals doing burpees. And it's really a beautiful thing to watch. Um, I can mention so many names here. Uh, right now I'm not going to because where would I stop? I follow so many of you. Um, and everyone's important, important for me to watch, enjoy. Um, so that really this morning, thinking and writing about ultimate reality and how um, it's really just many phases of one thing. It's form and then it's formlessness, it's atoms and then it's electrons and protons and neutrons. Um, it's them, and then it's vibrations, and then before vibrations, it's absolutely nothing. And then who knows what may go on beyond nothing. But all of it is us. All of it produces us. We are, um, I think it was St. Catherine of Siena said, all the way to God is God. And we can just uh, simplify that for the non-religious, for the non, for the atheist. Um, all the way to reality is reality. Every rep, every burpee rep, this is the reality of the moment. It's a beautiful expression of the Godhood, of the Godhead of reality. Um, so we are literally the universe being expressed as motion and burpees. Um, that's a pretty remarkable thing to consider. Um, that's how I spent 
several minutes on end writing and contemplating this morning and I came to my burpee session um, fully inspired by the universe behind me within me expressed through me um, I hope maybe just by putting this out there a little bit that anyone who does watch um, when they approach their set they realize that the universe has their back and they do their um, session with a smile on their face that's about um, as much as I can ask for and hopefully that's enough for all of us so um, I'll talk to everyone later. Thanks for tuning in and checking it out. You guys have a good day. Bye.